Do you have a sway back and do you have to refine your sewing patterns? Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, whimsically referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch. First of all, what is a sway back? Well, it's where the back of your body dips in more than normal. So what is normal? We all do have a slight S curve in our backs, but somebody with a sway back is going to dip in even more. And so think of this, if your body was totally rectangular and you took a rectangular piece of fabric and laid it on your body, it would hang straight down. But when you take a rectangular piece of fabric and hang it on a back that's got a sway to it, sometimes you get bunching in the center. Well, in previous videos, I did show you how to deal with just the bodice to remove excess fabric at the waistline. And I also showed you in another video how to remove excess fabric if you were just working with a skirt pattern. So where you're going to find those videos is in the SureFit Designs Learning Center .com, of course. And today, what I want to talk about is the pattern that's got the skirt attached to it. So what do I mean by that? Well, a long blouse or perhaps a tunic that you wear over top of leggings or perhaps a dress where center back has been cut on the fold. Let's take a look at this shirt blouse that I've got on the mannequin here. You can see some bunching at the back. Now, one thing that I definitely want you to make sure of is make sure that this bunching isn't caused by the fabric hanging up on your hips and then pushing upward. If your hip circumference isn't big enough and if the hips kind of widen out as you go lower down, what will happen is, is that your fabric will push up like this on your hips because it needs to find a circumference that will fit your hip line, of course, and then it pushes this fabric into your low back. So number one, make sure that you have enough hip circumference. And actually in the article library in the Learning Center, you're going to see an article on the sway back and some of the causes of what might be pushing that fabric up into your low back. But if you eliminate the causes and you still have this bunching at your low back in here, then there is a very good chance you've got that excessive dip in the small of your back. And so how do we get rid of that? Well, that's extra length in a rectangular piece of fabric that we don't need back there. And so your side seams are generally just fine. It's just right in the center. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. So let's take a look at the blueprint that I have drawn on my working surface here. You can see that this is from the SureFit Designs dress kit pattern. That means that it's got the vertical darts in the hip line going into the bodice. And if you need a shoulder dart, you would have been instructed to put that in as well. So that's the blueprint we're working from. And let's just assume that you've tested this and you end up with the excess fabric right at the small of your back. How are you going to remove that fabric when you've got center back on the fold of the fabric and you don't want a seam there and you don't want a seam at your waistline? You know, those seams are really very beneficial for helping to shape fabric around your body. But let's see what we can do if we're going to work with a one-piece pattern with center back on the fold. So don't cut this one up. What I want you to do is draw a copy of the blueprint that you've been working on. Now, my original has been drawn in blue so that you can see it. And now I've got a Christmas tree here. I've got a green outline and I've got some red cutting lines. Well, I'm going to put the green outline over top of the blue outline and I know the colors blend. In a bit, I will be removing that blue outline. But what I've done is copied an exact copy of what the blue outline, what the body blueprint was that we want to modify. And then I need to put on some cutting lines. And I've done that in red. 
So the very first line you're going to mark in is the line that's kind of in the middle of the armhole, the back armhole right here. Kind of go halfway and then take a perpendicular line and your line drafter is very, very beneficial for doing this. And then draw a line going right across into the armhole area. The second line you're going to draw is a parallel line and this line is going to be parallel to center back. And you'll notice where I've put this line. It's on the side of the vertical dart closest to the side seam. And I did that so that I didn't disrupt this dart any more than is already going to happen. So that's the second line to draw, is a line that is totally parallel to the center back. Then you need to draw another slash line that is going from this intersection point, and you need to draw it through your shoulder point, and then the last line that you're going to draw is from this intersection point, and you're going to take it through your neck point on the shoulder line. So those are your four cutting lines. Now let's also assume that you have one inch of extra length at the small, <coughs> excuse me, at the small of your back. I'm going to take the line drafter and notice what I'm doing. I'm lining up my one inch line on the line drafter with my waist level marking on my body blueprint. And then what I'm going to do is draw a line right here that is indicating this amount is what I need to remove from that center back area of my pattern. And now before I can start cutting, I need to remove the blueprint from underneath. But we are going to come back and reference this. So I'll just set it off to the side for right now. Okie dokie, now we're ready to go. The shoulder point and my neck point are going to become pivot points. So I'm just putting a little piece of stabilizing tape over top. And let's see, the line I'm going to cut first is going to be this one right here at my one inch line. You could be removing a half an inch, you could be removing an inch and a quarter, it's kind of up to you. And I'm cutting up to that parallel line that's parallel to the center back. Then I'm going to cut up to this triangular point right here, and I'm going to cut out, not all the way out, I should say, up to my hinge point at the shoulder point, and then I'm going to pick up the cut on the other side of the shoulder point and go all the way out through the tracing vellum. And then I'm going to cut on this other diagonal line up to my neck point hinge point and then out through the tracing vellum. And now what I want to do is take this and I'm going to move my one inch line all the way down to my green waist level. And I have to make sure that everything lays flat up at the shoulder line. So I have a little bit more clipping to do to make sure I'm right on the hinge point. If I can lift this up, let's see here, I need to clip just a little bit more and create a really nice hinge there. And that hinge just came undone. So let me put another little piece of tape there. I cut too close in that circumstance, but you can see it's easy enough. Just add a little bit more tape. I don't know if I can do this. I can't do it from the angle I'm at, so let me get the rotary cutter in there. Let me try again from this position. All right, let's see how that's gonna work. Now, my pattern is all cut up and ready to move. So I need to remove this one inch from the center back of my pattern. And 
that red one inch line that I drew needs to come straight down and you're going to let these pieces just overlap the way they want to and this is going to come straight down here and in order to make it totally lined up I'm trying to keep this square to the camera too so that you can see it as well as possible. There we go. So I'm totally parallel here. One right on top of the other and my shoulder area is flat. Now without losing any of this I need to get it taped really quickly here. So I am using removable tape if you've never used this removable tape before, I know you're absolutely going to love it. It will not rip your vellum. So if I had made a mistake here, I would be able to lift that tape up without tearing the tracing vellum. And everything is laying down nice and flat. So now I need to back this with another piece of tracing vellum. And I have a piece cut here and ready to go. So let's slide this underneath and it will basically look like this and now I need to get some more tape in place and make sure when you're doing things like this that you tape it down well because you don't want anything shifting and flopping on you afterward when you start uh, doing a cutting or layout and we'll put another couple little pieces of tape up here to hold the shoulder line down. And now I'd like to discuss what has happened with this whole modification. And then I'm going to put the blueprint, my other blueprint, underneath so that you can really see the differences. You can see that I've jogged out from center back and I obviously need to have my fabric on the fold, so what are we going to do? Well, I'm just going to draw straight down I'll use my line drafter and I'm going to come straight down from the top portion, from the bodice portion of the pattern and I'm going to come up to that hem level. So you can see what I've added here is this much fabric, that much width to the pattern. And up in the bodice area I have also added that much width to the pattern, meaning it got wider across the entire width. We will correct that in a moment. I also want you to see what happened to your vertical dart in the middle of the, of the pattern. This top portion of it got jogged one way and the bottom portion stayed stable. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just do a light pencil line coming up through the tip of my dart right here and I'm making sure that everything is lined up with my center back and I'm going to take a light pencil line going up to the tip of where my dart was before and then I know the width of my dart now we'll do this one in red I know the width of the dart it's right here and here and that's why I didn't want you putting this cut line down through the center of the dart. So now I'm just going to redraw this fitting dart like this. Okay, so that's been reestablished and center back on the fold has been reestablished and I'll just mark this as center back on the fold of the fabric. All right, now, we are going to need to redraw the position of this dart, the shoulder dart, if you have one. If you don't have one, you don't need to worry about it. And in order to see the position that I want, and in order to see what happened at the side seam, now I'm going to take the original blueprint that I started work from, and I'm going to slip it underneath, and I'm going to line things up here. So I'm going to line up the waistline and the center back in the top portion. And now you can really see the blue coming through. 
And in order to not let this shift, I do want to put down a couple of pieces of tape as we start doing the analysis of what happened to the pattern. I think I'll add one more right in here too. Alrighty, so we've lost the length at the small of your back. We took that out, one inch gone. But what it did do was it compromised your shoulder line. Your shoulder point has basically remained the same, but look what's happened to the shoulder line. You might want to try this refinement or minor tune-up to see if you like it. Some people it's going to work great on. The other thing that I want to do now is I want to take a look at what happened to the position of this shoulder dart, if you have one. And so it really got shifted over. And when I redraw this, I'm just going to take a visual look of where my new dart tip is here. And I'm going to angle it just slightly so that if I was doing a princess line with this, it would come up in a nice angle to the tip of that dart. And I'll just draw this in pencil going up so I know where I would like my tip to be. And it's about right in, in here. Okay, now I will also do this in red. I'm going to redraw the shape of my back shoulder dart because I still want it pointing towards my back shoulder blade. And we're assuming that that worked out correctly for you when you put that shoulder dart in. So now if I was to do a princess line, I'd have a nice smooth transition going up into that shoulder dart. Now, the next thing that you can see has happened is that I have lost uh, some width at the side seam here. Actually, I shouldn't say I've lost width, I've gained width. And you can see the amount that I've gained. So if you don't want your bodice any wider, then go ahead and take your designing stylus and just simply redraw your side seam and your hip level in this fashion. So that now you've removed the excess that got added when you did this modification to your pattern. And you'll also notice the armhole here. And I am going to change that as well. We have to maintain the same shoulder point. And now I'm going to remove the excess. I'm just going to flip this over to get a little bit better curvature going here. And there's the new back arm side. And you can see the excess that I've now removed which is compensating for the width that got added in the center back of the pattern. And I don't mean this center back, I mean in the center of the back of the pattern. So that's the modification that you would do if you're working with the SureFit Designs bodice and skirt, one attached to the other. And if you're working with the SureFit Designs shirt pattern, then you're just dealing with a one-piece pattern to start with, you won't have a shoulder dart to deal with, and in the master pattern, there is an optional waist fitting dart, and some of you sew it in and some of you don't. Oh, and one final thing, let's not forget the straight of grain. I would like to invite you to join the SureFit Designs community if you haven't already. And you can certainly do that in three easy steps. Number one, sign up for our newsletter. Just go to surefitdesigns.com and there'll be a pop-up there that you can put your name and email address in. Secondly, make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thirdly, we have a fantastic international Facebook group. If you happen to have a Facebook page and would like to join us, please go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash SureFit Designs and join the fun with all of the other SFDers.